Hey everybody, welcome to episode 10 of Realms Remembered. This is Michael T. Bradley. Isn't it nice how that worked out, episode 10, and we reached the Time of Troubles, a huge turning point in the realms, kind of. And we're, we're at a big turning point as well. We enter the double digits with Realms Remembered now. Very exciting, totally by chance. So of course the year is 1358. We're gonna skip over the Shadows of the Avatar trilogy for a few reasons. First of which is, again, I said I would give Greenwood a try again once we get to Elminster and Hell. I kind of looked at these a little bit simply because I do enjoy the Time of Troubles times, and I thought, oh, maybe this is something interesting. Maybe this uh, addresses one of the main problems I had with the Avatar trilogy, but it does not, however. It's mainly Elminster versus, I believe, the Zentarim. Uh, something about the Shadow Weave, which really doesn't kind of play into anything until uh, Return of the Archwizards, I don't think, so it's odd that it gets used here. Uh, those are, of course, Shadows of Doom, Cloak of Shadows, and All Shadows Fled. Anyway, if you like Greenwood stuff, be sure to check it out because it's it's kind of an addendum to the Time of Troubles uh, area of time. So the one kind of problem that I had hoped Shadows of Avatar addressed, and it did not, and it's not necessarily a problem, but it was something that really shocked me when I read these a uh, few years back, and uh, just so you know, they are in order Shadowdale, Tantris, and Waterdeep. The thing that kind of struck me, and now it seems to make more sense now that I've read a lot more of the older Realm stuff, but at the time it's like we start out, I, I don't know if it's the prologue or chapter one, and we see Ao sitting the gods down and being like, somebody stole my tablets and I'm going to punish you and you have to become avatars and da 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 da. Sets up the entire plot and then we switch to an adventuring party. <laughs> and I found this really odd. Like, I was like, why aren't we following all the avatars and what they're doing? Like, that was a big frustration in Siege of Darkness as well. I mean, Lolf got turned into an avatar, and uh, what did she do? I mean, uh, she, like, hung around with a couple, or, like, with one house for, like, two weeks, and that was it? Like, I really wanted to see more with all of the different gods who got turned into avatars, and instead we only get a brief glimpse, if anything, at that point. Yet, as I say, now having read tons more Realm stuff uh, leading up to this point, it makes a lot of sense why we follow an adventuring party, because that is kind of the cut and cloth of Realm's fiction at this point. I, I kind of dove into this having only read a couple of really random things, only about half of which followed that formula. And it's not necessarily a formula, because I mean... The adventuring parties, I, I, like for instance, the adventuring parties in the uh, Pool of Radiance uh, thing is very, very different than the adventuring parties in, say, the Drizzt books. Um, generally, there's a wizard involved, but beyond that, it's all up in the air. For these, we have, um, <laughs> as a friend of mine who, who likes to call these the Crisis on Infinite Earths of the Forgotten Realms uh, world, uh, says we, we have this really angsty panther shapeshifter, which, um, I don't know, I, I skimmed a lot of the bits with him, so <laughs> he didn't really strike me that well. See, here's my, a, a, a big problem for me with the Avatar trilogy is that I really, really, really enjoyed books four and five, so they kind of color my memories of one through three. I know, for instance, Shadowdale, I almost entirely skipped because, like, I, I read the bits that pertain to our party and the um, uh, the avatars, and that was about it. Because the 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 main plot with the party, like like the party background and how they get into Shadowdale, is what I'm saying. I did read the main kind of plot is essentially they're uh, framed for Elminster's murder, and it's kind of like, did they really do it? And well, of course they didn't kill Elminster. I mean, come on, Elminster will never ever die unless Ed Greenwood dies, and even then probably he won't. So I found that kind of ridiculous, and now especially having just read uh, Song of the Sorials, which occurs the same year, I believe, that means that uh, there were two Elminster is dead, we have to investigate a plots that happened that year, 1358, which is a little strange, um, I would think. Apparently this man is thought to be murdered uh, twice a year, and it's not a big deal. So a little odd there. In any case, that's the plot of Shadowdale, and then Tantris and Waterdeep, I don't really remember as much. Like, I remember remember little bits and pieces here and there, but I don't necessarily want to talk about the plot. It's kind of a mixed bag, and I think everybody agrees that Waterdeep by Denning is the best out of the three, but that doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean the first two are bad. They're just not, um, and it could be that Waterdeep is the best because it has so much payoff. So let's talk about a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of that payoff. We, we don't get into the really good bits of it until, again, uh, 4 and 5, Prince of Lies and uh, Trial of Crucible, or Crucible Trial of Sirith the Mad, but... 
what we get here is we get Mistra being killed, which is huge and odd because her name's Mistra, not Mistra. Anyway, whatever, that's how it's supposedly pronounced. So we get Mistra being killed. I'm pretty sure in this trilogy we get, what's her face, uh, Midnight taking her place. And we have uh, all the craziness with Cyric. Now, I have said multiple times before that I see these books in many ways, uh, most a, a lot of them, maybe not all of them, but in many ways they kind of portray, here's how you run X in your game. Here's how you deal with Y in your game. So something that really struck me about these is that much like how in Dragonlance, Raistlin, I think, was there as an example of how to run an evil character in your campaign, a lawful or neutral evil character in your campaign, one who looks after themselves, looks after themselves, I guess, and uh, is only interested in furthering their own ambitions, yet it would make sense that they're in an adventuring party and they're going to help other people out to further their own goals. I think Cyric works as an example of how do you deal, or well, how you could deal with somebody who's chaotic evil in an adventuring party that's mostly good. What's interesting is, you know, I don't know Raceland's final fate. I gave up at some point during the Dragonlance stuff because it just got incredibly repetitive for me. But what's interesting about Cyric is the kind of answer is, well, eventually you end up being the god of lies and murder. That's kind of how it works out, which is a great idea because, I mean, the interesting thing is the story keeps going even when half the characters become gods. Uh, mostly that happens in book four and five, but we see little bits of it uh, towards the end of Waterdeep, I believe. I'm pretty sure that Mistra gets killed at the end of like book two and uh, Midnight takes over somewhere in book three and we deal with that a decent amount. Again, I could be wrong. I don't remember exactly how it all plays out, but it's uh, it's worth reading, and probably sometime after it's been more than just a couple of years, I will go back and reread them in depth because I really did enjoy them overall. But point being, that's what happens when you have chaotic evil in a party. If it's not an adventuring party, they're just going to kind of uh, uh, implode and not go anywhere interesting. If you have a party that you kind of have to keep going for plot's sake, you can do stuff with them. You can do crazy stuff with them. If you give them the opportunities, they're going to act on it, and they can become the god of lies and murder in your world. And that's pretty awesome. That's pretty interesting and uh, a very unprecedented way to go. I was really shocked that, you know, I, I mean, so many of these realm sort of books, um, you have people, it, it's all about redemption. No matter how bad someone's past might have been, redemption is the ultimate goal. I mean, we have the undead paladin from the... Um, from the pools book, one of them. We have the uh, the, the half-orc thief who redeems himself and escape from Undermountain, etc., etc., etc. You see that redemption, that, that anybody can be redeemed, and, like, if they meet a nice person and they get lots of hugs, then they are totally... It, it's all solved. It's all cured, and they're better. This storyline does not go that route at all. Cyric is not saved. Cyric keeps going down a spiral and he becomes like the worst thing in the realms ever, <laughs> which is mind-blowingly interesting and fun and just a pleasure to read overall. Now, some bits are, you know, a little tiresome and a little annoying, but overall, overall, great read. Cannot recommend this trilogy enough. So now that we've looked at it that, from that point of view, let's look at, because kind of the, the point, I think, of, of this trilogy as a whole was to unify the realms. I think most of the books that had been written before this point were kind of assumed to be second edition realms. It's not like this brings us into second edition realms, I, I don't think, um, in the way that, say, Return of the Archwizards brings us into third edition. But I think this was kind of a unifying thing to say, like, from now on, almost all the realms books will refer to this moment to kind of show that we are a shared world and shared more than uh, just a little bit. I, I believe that was kind of the point of it. So I think this is a good time to kind of look back on what we've read up to this point and say, does it work as a unified world? Overall, I would say yes. My main problem at this point is it feels way too generic so far. That's kind of the problem when you have a world as gigantic and all-encompassing as the realms, is that it can feel watered down whenever you're dealing with anything in it. I mean, as realized as Icewind Dale might feel versus how Kalimport feels, etc., etc., 
a certain point it just feels like we're reading dozens of unconnected fantasy novels that happen to share the names of the gods. So it will be interesting to see, since Time of Troubles was supposed to be this unifying thing, if going from here forward, at least up till uh, we hit a Return of the Archwizards, which brings us into third edition, if everything feels more unified and less watered down, if everything becomes more specific, if you will. I'm not saying necessarily that the world has to do that, just that you can feel that lack, I think. I'm really excited to get towards the end of 3rd edition, uh, or the end of 2nd uh, edition uh, into 3rd edition stuff, because I think definitely with 3rd edition fiction, they do a much better job of that. More stuff centers around things that are uh, more interesting, and, and uh, like for instance, just everything in Symbia. I mean, we're talking like 15, 16 novels that are three or four different uh, series and so on and so forth, and I'm really, really excited to get to that point. As of right now, we're going to kind of keep dealing with a more scattershot approach to the world, which isn't necessarily bad. It's just not as unified as I would kind of wish. And again, after Time of Troubles, that seems to be the point of it. Of course, I think we're going to hit some books that were written pre-Time of Troubles, but we'll see. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not really sure about publication date versus Realms chronology. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes from here on out. Really curious to see what you guys thought of the Avatar trilogy. Did everybody enjoy it overall? The reviews on Amazon seem pretty positive, and that's kind of the only metric I have to, uh, to gauge these things by at this point. Please uh, feel free to drop a line, drop some feedback, uh, throw me a private message if you don't want to go on saying that you like listening to this stuff. Whatever. I'm really curious to hear what you think and uh, see what you think of everything that we've covered so far and see if there are any questions that you would like to see talked about in the upcoming stuff. Uh, if you're like, well, you know, now that we've hit Time of Troubles, keep an eye out for da-da-da, -da -da, or did you notice da-da-da? -da -da? Totally be curious to talk about that. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for listening, and I cannot believe that we have made it 10 episodes in, and we have hit the Time of Troubles, and it's a huge, huge turning point. Very exciting. All right, thanks everybody for listening. This is Michael T. Bradley, Realms Remembered.